My name is John Hambrick. I'm the owner of Eloise Asylum. I've been an affordable housing developer for quite a long time, but I had never heard of Eloise Asylum, nor did I know the history. I met John 10 years ago. I started to get interested in his business. He worked in real estate finance on the development side. In October of 2019, this property was on the market for three years and it didn't get one offer. It's a massive property with a lot of massive buildings on it. Nobody wanted this site. So I get a phone call from the county executive's office and he asked, John, what would you think of the property? I said, you know, I'll pass. They had mothballed it since 1981 when they got rid of the last patient. So it was literally like stepping back in time. And he said, come on, what would you give us? And I said, oh, I'll give you a dollar. He calls me back a couple of days later and he's like, yeah, they took it. What are we gonna do with this? There's liability insurance, security on site, getting the grass cut, 17 acres, a couple thousand dollars a week. It's gonna be a liability. When John's initial plan to build affordable senior housing became unaffordable, he was nearly out of options. Oh my God, what do we do with this property now? We own it. A friend of mine was really big into paranormal and he called me and said, John, do you mind if we, you know, come in to do a paranormal investigation here? John was like, what do you think? I was like, yeah, why not? I mean, they're not hurting anything. Not hurting anything. Not hurting. We didn't think, why are we kicking a hornet's nest here? At first, I thought it was harmless letting paranormal investigators in here. But one moment I'll never forget was when my daughter was here just to see the building. That was a mistake. I went up to the fifth floor. All of a sudden, I just felt something pulled my hair. I turned around and there was absolutely nobody there and I freaked out and started crying and radioed for my dad, and he was all the way on the first floor. Dad, 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 dad. And she is hysterical. I rush up to meet her, and she just grabs me and hugs me and starts crying. He didn't know what to do, and neither did I, and that was when I like first knew that there's something here. So when we first bought the asylum, I was a skeptic ghosts and hauntings were the last thing on our minds. But my daughter's safety was put in jeopardy by something I couldn't touch, feel, or see. As a parent, it was horrifying. I don't think I've ever been that scared in my life. There's something in this place the activity has definitely increased since there has been more people in the building. Whatever's here is violent. It doesn't belong here. It needs to go where it's supposed to go. I'm concerned we're messing with something we shouldn't be messing with. We need help. I need somebody with experience that can get us the answers we need. My name is Scott Porter. I've worked in law enforcement and I've investigated hundreds of abandoned asylums. I've been researching them for over a decade. But this is different. I can tell that he's scared and doesn't know what he has here. So I've agreed to come and take a look and consider doing a full-scale investigation. But first, I want them to take me through LOEs and hear what they've experienced. It's one thing to hear and read about Eloise Asylum. It's another thing to be here and step inside. Coming through those doors, having them shut behind you. It's like you're locked inside a five-story coffin. Something's just not right here.
You said you got a lot of stuff going on here. Can you tell me about it? Yeah. The very first paranormal experience I ever had was actually right here on this step. Okay. I was coming down from the fifth floor, and as soon as I reached this step, it wasn't like hands or like a physical touch, but more of like a force in my back and went straight forward. I remember too, because Adam was a skeptic. Right. He didn't believe in any of this. Please understand, Adam's an analytical. Right. So everything's got a box or a, a number or a formula. I had been hearing of all these experiences people would have, you know, there were footsteps, you know, or the slamming of the door. I'm like, okay, I'm one of the owners of this property. I have never seen anything. I've never experienced anything. I started to get to the point where I was like, if you're really here, show me some shit. Like, let me see something. Over the next week, I had a handful of paranormal experiences. I was hissed at, growled at. I was on the fifth floor looking out the window. As I was kind of looking out like this, I felt that same force push me. Man, you've got to be careful what you ask for. I've seen this hundreds of times before. People think they want to experience a ghost or a haunting, but once you ask something to interact with you, invite it to show itself, it stays there until it wants to move on. Did you ever have anything else happen? Come on, let me show you. Welcome to the fifth floor. This is where it all happens. Every time I'm on the fifth floor, I always get a headache and I feel nauseous for some reason. One time I remember being here with an investor and I wanted to show him the hydrotherapy tub and we had come down from the stairs that are over there and we we're walking down this hallway and I was chatting it up with him and all of a sudden out of that hallway we heard the loudest boom. I mean, it was so loud. We both just launched back and looked at each other, and he said to me, I don't really want to see that. And I go, well, I don't really want to see it either. And we just kind of scurried downstairs, right? Because uh, whatever was here did not want us going where we were going, and we just knew it. So it felt pretty ominous then. Oh, yeah, it was threatening. Like, you are not welcome here. Get out. So Adam was physically pushed after taunting the spirit, and John is being shown pretty clearly that he isn't welcome here. Sounds to me like they're stoking the flames of this haunting. And the more people that come here, it can only get worse. Over here is actually where I had my most terrifying experience in this building. It's actually right down this hallway. It was really close to being dark, you know, late dusk hour. And I had come up from the stairs. I was walking over this way. And I caught something kind of out of the top of my eye. I noticed this kind of shadowy figure on the ceiling and then all of a sudden it started moving. But it moved in this contorted kind of shape and I beelined it right for the stairs and went directly downstairs. So now when you saw it, did it, was it fluid? Like it moved like a human or did it? Like the limbs bent in the opposite direction. I, I could definitely sense some aggression from it. And you haven't seen it since? I have not seen it since. It doesn't sound like it would be a, the spirit of a human that would be acting that way. John, that has to scare the heck out of you having that in your building. Absolutely. Is it demonic? Is it safe? That's why I called you in here, to figure out what it is and why it's here. This place has all the markings of a dark and dangerous haunt. Physical attacks inhuman shadow figures, and aggression toward new visitors. John and Adam might have bought this place for a buck, but they got way more than they bargained for.